um, uh, yeah, yes, uh, Sujata, yes. madam, you can start. Already yes, yes, too sir. late, but uh, now I will not give any introduction about ITS. So please okay. directly you can start. Yes, yes, sir. It's already late okay. now, that's why you please start. You can uh, directly yes, can sir. start with the Okay, sir. Okay, okay. A very warm good evening to all the dignitaries, globally recognized IEEE representatives, Execom members of various regions and subsections, organizing committee of this event, branch counselors and student volunteers. Myself, Dr. Sujata Patil, Execom member, IEEE, Bangalore ITS chapter, and working as a head of electrical and electronics engineering, KLE Dr. M.S. Teshgiri, College of Engineering and Technology, Belangavi. Welcome you all to this international webinar on free and open source software of electromagnetic engineering. This is organized by IEEE Information Theory, Bangalore Chapter, in association with IEEE Bangalore Section and IEEE Mysore Subsection. The topic chosen is highly relevant in current scenario. I request all the participants to stay muted for the smooth conduction of the event. IEEE and its members inspire the global community to innovate for the better tomorrow through highly cited publications, conferences, technology standards, and professional and educational activities. IEEE is a trusted voice of engineering, computing, and technology information around the globe. IEEE Information Theory membership enables an individual to stay updated within the chosen technology and ensures one in, uh, in touch with the peers. IEEE Information Theory Society is a leading technical society that focuses on the processing, transmission, storage, and use of information as well as the foundation to the communication society. So with this, uh, I now request Dr. Jagan uh, HPE Bangalore to introduce the uh, today's speaker, Dr. Gan Louis uh, Lugi Gragmani, Professor DITEN, University of Genoa, Italy. Uh, Dr. Jagan. Yes, madam. I am happy to introduce uh, Gyan Lugni. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Oh. <laughs> you hear me? Hello. Uh, sir, uh, we are getting introduced about you. Just uh, give us some time. We will uh, have your introduction read out, then you start, sir. Hello. Hello, Professor Gan. Yeah. Yeah, just two minutes, sir. So, Dr. Jagan is going to introduce you to all yeah. the uh, members. Then you can start your session. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, the professor received his electronic engineering from uh, University of Bangalore, age of 1985. In the same year, he joined the Applied Electromagnetics Group with the Department of Biophysical and Electronic Engineering, uh, University of Bangalore. Uh, subsequently, he has also uh, cooperated with the Inter University Research Center for Interactions Between Electromagnetic Field and Biological Systems, ICEMB of which he is the former deputy director. Fourth more, furthermore, since 1918, he has been responsible for the Applied Electromagnetics Laboratory. He is currently a professor electromagnetic fields at the Department of Electrical, Electronics, Telecommunication Engineering, Naval Architecture, DITEN of the University of Genoa, where he delivers courses on antennas and electromagnetic propagation. His current research interests are on electromagnetic scattering, both direct and inverse, microwave imaging, wideband antennas, computational electromagnetics, and open source software, as well as electromagnetic compatibility. So I request, uh, I mean, uh, Professor, uh, to uh, uh, you know, hand over the dias to him. Thank you, Dr. Oh. Jagan. 
now I have the privilege to uh, of inviting Professor Gan uh, to address the gathering. We are eagerly waiting to hear about the free and open source softwares which are available for electromagnetic engineering. Sir, over to you. Professor Gan. Thank you. Thank you, uh, everybody, and uh, good evening. Hope that uh, at least you can hear me. And uh, well, I will uh, present uh, a, a review about uh, the open source uh, software and uh, we can move please to the next slide uh, so i can show you as a short sum can, can i, I move, move? yeah hope my screen is visible uh, someone can confirm yes uh, yes you have to go to the next slide yeah. okay yeah thank you okay uh, well, uh, I really don't know how to, uh, I, well, okay. Uh, my, my presentation will be um, made by a short preface uh, um, about uh, open source uh, software in general, the motivations and goals to move the um my me and my colleagues to to search uh, about uh, open source uh, software something about um, the um, the good uh, and bad points of uh, commercial and open source products something about uh, numerical methods and the methods that uh, are uh, commonly used in uh, electromagnetics and uh, I will show you some examples um, and draw my conclusion. Next. Okay. Uh, well, uh, numerical simulation applied to electromagnetic problems is a very broad and um, multifaceted field because um, uh, there are many, let's say, research, different uh, field of research inside electromagnetics and uh, starting from uh, scattering from optical problems uh, for antenna from going to antenna problems and uh, uh, devices and uh, so on. And um, it's uh, more than 50 years than um, there is simulation software for electromagnetic analysis and uh, design. But there is uh, still uh, um, a large uh, spread of uh, commercial solutions. But the one can move also in another direction. Uh, it is uh, using open source possibilities. Also, uh, when uh, one develops in-house uh, tools, uh, um, it is uh, rare that to consider open source uh, possibilities. Now I want to uh, show you some uh, possible solutions. Next, please. Uh, well, um, Especially in industry, um, the standard approach uh, is to employ commercial software uh, because they, um, I say, 
cannot integrate can integrate in uh, the design workflow or uh, to say better um, the entire flow workflow of the the company is designed around uh, some uh, uh, software already decided a priori decided um well uh oh sorry but i missed the the full screen and uh, oh it is yes okay well uh, uh, hey, uh commercial software is uh, uh, very costly for uh, the time of purchase and for maintenance of licenses as well as upgrades. And the other important uh, aspect of uh, commercial software is that it is closed source so it cannot be easily extended um, except uh, um, to to the limit uh, uh, offered by the provider the provider of the the, the software you cannot uh, modify or uh, reverse engineer engineer the, the software and, and so on well uh, in the, the academia instead it is very frequent uh, to develop in-house uh, simulation software from scratch or to modify already existing software packages uh, inside um, the same university or, uh, or group to experiment new models and algorithms. Um, on, uh, on the other hand, the, the development of electromagnetic simulation software and uh, uh, accurate uh, numerical models is still a wide uh, research field by itself and and uh, papers on these topics are continuously published uh, in in many important journals next please uh, well um, let me say that it is not uncommon to find illegal version of commercial software suites in uh, in both academic and industrial frameworks um, especially when the available budget is low um, well uh, in this case uh, we have an ethic problem but also uh, we we face a series of potential security concerns and uh, on the other uh, the other uh, side it is very rare, rare that uh, academic institutions work together uh, to develop open source uh, packages and it is more than rare that university and uh, in, in companies work together uh, maybe they work together when they are founded um, usually with public uh, funds uh, but uh, when this uh, project comes to an end uh, uh, usually they retain the results without uh, <coughs> going back to the community any code or, <clears throat> or 
or, or software. Well, um, next, please. Well, uh, in, in the light of these uh, considerations, um, it would be of great value uh, to have uh, free and open source software available for electromagnetic design and uh, uh, not only for the scientific communities but also for more companies that cannot face the, fa the costs related to commercial products. Uh, furthermore, open source codes could be proposed as an interesting alternative to commercial codes in uh, courses about electromagnetic theory and design. You know, there are many courses uh, as maybe sponsored uh, by companies or uh, uh, simply uh, some companies offer a reduced version of, uh, of, uh, of their software um, to get the students familiarized uh, with their products and so on. But an interesting, a very interesting alternative could be could open source. Uh, and there are also other motivations uh, because uh, nowadays there is an increasing demand of open data in the scientific community as um, open source is the natural choice when uh, we want to face uh, uh, the cultural and the, uh, cultural and ethical motivations uh, of um, about open data and uh, data sharing and research uh, sharing. Um, yeah, presentation is visible, sir. Uh, it is visible. Continue, please continue. Uh, can you can you move to the next uh, slide, please? Okay. Uh, well, as they said, the many small companies cannot uh, <coughs> face the, uh, the financial burden <coughs> of uh, software licenses. Academia, on the other hand, has the need to modify software to experiment uh, to the, um, derive new models and codes. And uh, in, in many cases, uh, open source software is recommended also for scholarly papers uh, and uh, developing software can be research work by itself. So, uh, in this work we are carrying out, uh, uh, we want to identify and evaluate possible open source programs antennas, and this is my main interest, uh, but also other uh, electromagnetic devices uh, such as filter couplers, um, um, transitions, um, adapters, and so on. We also want to find a companion software that allows to pre and post processing of data and consider the possibility of easily integrating the design in the complete production and testing cycle for uh, for industries. Uh, next, please. Hello? Oh. Well, um, I want to distinguish 
between open source codes and free or charge uh, programs. And uh, here there are many cultural motivations to, to make uh, this extinction. Open source is released in the form of source code. You can f modify the, the software and adapt uh, to uh, your needs. Uh, you uh, in sometime, depending on the license of the software, you must uh, uh, go back your modifications uh, to the community. But uh, you can uh, uh, do otherwise uh, almost what you want with the, the software and uh, uh, moreover and uh, very important is that you know the source the models and the implementations of your code uh, instead of free of charge program are simply freeware programs and uh, but uh, they do not allow any intervention you maybe cannot uh, share yet uh, you cannot uh, port it uh, to another system and so on and i will focus on open source program next please <clears throat> well uh, if we look at the design workflow that uh, is uh, in this case for electromagnetic simulations, but uh, could be for uh, many, uh, many processes. We see that uh, we have uh, uh, started, we start from uh, some uh, brainstorming, uh, some uh, starting ideas, and then we move to electromagnetic simulation to uh, verify our ideas and electromagnetic uh, simulation itself could be uh, divided in three uh, major blocks uh, pre-processing um, simulation uh, <clears throat> in strict sense and the post-processing of uh, data um, uh, next, please. Well, uh, as for preprocessing, uh, it this phase can be in turn decomposed in uh, in various steps. Uh, description of the geometric parameters of the design, approximate the geometry by means of a proper modeling tools, uh, generate uh, a mesh, uh, decompose the, your device into elementary building blocks, describe also the physical parameters and uh, of your uh, yeah, design and the sources you use to, to feed uh, your device. Um, uh, choose the solver and define the simulation model and generate the input data for the solver engine. Uh, next, uh, we have the numerical solution. Next, yeah, yes, next, please. The numerical solution, uh, when we uh, supply the data generating during the preprocessing step, to a solver engine, and we get the numerical solution of our problem. And in general, the solver will generate one or more output files containing the results, and that will be used in the post-processing phase. Um, next, please. Uh, well, in post processes, data are extracted from the output uh, provided by the numerical solver and are used for many purposes. 
to verify the results so we can look over the design cycle if, if results are not satisfactory but we can also um, attach the results to another phase to an optimization software or we can uh, generate inputs to other simul simulation but we can also compare with other numerical simulation compare with measures um, we can uh, organize data in files, tables, graphs, and so on to prepare internal documentations, to prepare uh, scientific research and papers, but also uh, have a, an automatic or uh, semi-automatic uh, generation for the customer documentation and uh, also very important uh, to uh, uh, to create the documents uh, for internal or uh, uh, to give to third party uh, for pro prototyping or for production of our device uh, next, please. Well, uh, something about the user interaction. Well, in order to carry out the previous step, the user interacts with the software uh, through a, a graphical user interface or with text file with um, well uh, graphical user interfaces are very useful to, to have an immediate visualization of the geometry and to follow the evolution of the process when we are solving something uh, maybe we have uh, something uh, saying you that uh, you are going well you are uh, your simulation uh, is uh, converging and so on and begin and beginners can uh, fruitful use uh, graphical user interfaces to uh, <clears throat> to learn uh, to learn the main commands of um, um, another um, and maybe complex software in uh, in a very short time. On the other hand, uh, um, text files are more flexible, and uh, maybe in many cases, skilled users prefer to uh, um, go faster with, uh, by using text files and. Um, maybe you can uh, submit uh, complex uh, scripts uh, to your software and uh, on the other hand one has to know uh, the program is is using in uh, in deep the details uh, um, but in general, you can mix uh, GUIs and uh, files depending on the phase of you are facing at the moment. Uh, well, uh, next, uh, please. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Thank you very much. Well, um, let we have a look at uh, commercial and open source products in general when you buy a commercial product uh, you have all or a large part of the tool that you need for the entire project uh, flow uh, in uh, on on the other side, uh, development of complex on uh, complete open source codes for electromagnetics is going slow 
because this topping is relatively young and uh, let's say rather niche even for open source community and uh, if you decide to use uh, open source uh, maybe you need to integrate non homogeneous products uh, that uh, could uh, at the moment not offer the same uh, level of functionality and um, if you want to build a, a, a system ranging from pre-processing to post-processing, it will certainly be necessary to integrate uh, various softwares with other paths uh, that uh, should be developed at home. But uh, if you do this, you should uh, share uh, your uh, uh, integrating codes with the, the community. Anyway, there are many packages that are already usable in a profitable way and are uh, constantly developed. And uh, furthermore, when you use open source, uh, usually the community is very available and uh, sometimes this uh, allows uh, problems to be solved much faster than uh, for commercial products. Next, please. Um, well, the advantages of commercial products, uh, uh, you have, um, easy to use uh, GUIs. Uh, usually you can use uh, easily integrated processors. Maybe you have the ability to import and export in different formats. Uh, be careful in different commercial pro uh, formats. Um, if you buy a complex uh, software, you maybe have uh, different solvers available uh, and you can choose depending on your problem, uh, the solver that uh, um, best fit uh, your needs. And uh, solvers are uh, designed to uh, fully exploit uh, the capabilities of the hardware. Uh, maybe the package is often scriptable, uh, but this is usually not so easy to do. They usually big packages contains also optimizers, uh, and post processing can generate graph graphs and images and. Uh, in some cases, uh, you can generate uh, written documentation, but uh, maybe you have uh, to write something by yourself. You have usually an extended documentation and um, maybe some uh, uh, maintenance uh, software, while uh, on the other side, you have a high initial cost. And uh, note that cost is for blocks of capabilities. So uh, if you want uh, an additional part, you have uh, to pay it uh, separately. Uh, licenses are uh, usually per year and uh, you need a, a license for each machine or uh, for a group of machine and uh, if you want to for example to use a gpu uh, you have to pay for um, an additional fee for gpu and uh, furthermore if you uh, have a um, a failure, an hardware failure, you must move uh, 
uh, your software and uh, you can do this uh, asking the company to re-register your license to motivate why you are moving your software and so on. Um, well, when you try to integrate uh, the, your product with other software, maybe you can uh, um, have to deal with uh, some uh, incompatibilities. Uh, and uh, if a feature is not present in the software, um, is it's not easy to have it integrate in uh, the in the code, nor it uh, uh, let's say have some external tool that uh, could uh, provide uh, this uh, this feature, but uh, and also can integrate well with your commercial package and. Uh, uh, if you want uh, uh, to investigate in your uh, files, your output files, maybe this uh, is not uh, always easy. And uh, so, um, because the the format is always uh, is often uh, proper proprietary. Instead, uh, when you use open source uh, products, uh, you have no license fees um, so that you can uh, use uh, software on different machines and possibly also in different versions. Uh, you can maintain hardware backup um, easily. You have access to the source code. You can modify, integrate uh, with the user specified uh, specific feature, your source code, and um, the tools uh, you are using are usually programmable with the standard programming languages, and are available on different operating systems. Integration with other software is a typical feature of open source products. And uh, you can use various and sophisticated post-processing tools. And it is relatively easy to generate uh, graphs, tables, and uh, for more, uh, or more, uh, more than this, you can generate documentation in text format. The file format is open to, um, and the developer community is uh, usually uh, very available for dialogue and suggestions. Next, please. Um, well, on the, the disadvantages are that the GUI are, uh, is absent in the, the most cases or is uh, rudimentary. Um, you have to integrate uh, your softwares because um, you have uh, not uh, all in one product in uh, open at the moment at least. Uh, you can use powerful CAD tools and uh, mesh generators, but uh, they are not so easy to use. In case of a uh, finite difference time domain, you must generate uh, a, a rectangular grid uh, mesh. This is not very simple. Um, maybe you... Uh, you have to import and export in standard format. Uh, and uh, maybe there are some commercial uh, formats that are proprietary formats that are not supported by uh, your uh, open source software. Uh, there are a few reliable and easy to use uh, solvers and usually are uh, um, 
Each solver is limited to the implementation of a single numerical method. Um, you can have also very sophisticated solvers, but uh, they are very complex. Uh, and so you have, uh, let's say, uh, to, uh, to design a software for each problem, you, you a different um, uh, software for, for each problem you uh, uh, you can also use uh, parametric optimization with uh, very sophisticated tools, but uh, also in this case, you have to integrate the optimi optimizer with the, uh, your, sol uh, your solver, and the documentation may be is incomplete, obsolete, or can be almost uh, absent. Next, uh, please. Um, next, uh, well, well, um, among the numerical methods, uh, I want to. Uh, I started from antennas, and in antennas, you have at the moment two uh, methods in particular. The final difference in the time domain uh, method, FDTD, and the moment method. While uh, the finite element method that is the most accurate method for the mathematical point of view is uh, not enough developed in uh, for electromagnetics while uh, you can find a lot of open source uh, software of uh, very high uh, high levels and uh, complexity for structural engineering uh, uh, um, ETH uh, and thermal problems and so on. Um, electromagnetic simulation uh, are um, at an infancy. I will show you something about uh, a, an interesting project named uh, One Lab that could be uh, interesting to, to check uh, and to study. Next, please. Well, uh, as for the method of moments, the reference program for many open source applications is the, uh, the NAC2 software that was developed uh, years ago, uh, maybe 1970 or less. Uh, and uh, this program is still used successfully for the analysis of many types of antennas, but is uh, nevertheless uh, limited because it can model only metal wire or uh, pipe structures uh, uh, connected through networks of lamped components or transmission lines. And there are some limitations in the positioning of the intersections and so on. And the source code of the NEC2 is, uh, was developed in uh, Fortran uh, 66 uh, and is still available. And uh, you usually in the open source uh, world, uh, you have no um, no models, no modelers, uh, nor uh, you have post um, processor for, or uh, at least you have limited post processing capabilities and so. Um, Next, please. 
Well, uh, anyway, since uh, NACTU is uh, still uh, um, widely used, uh, I want uh, to, to, to cite uh, and to highlight here uh, some uh, uh, modern, let's say, versions of the NACTU. In particular, you have NACTU C that uh, is, be, is the porting in C is the, was uh, verified by the original developers of NACTU. So, it is uh, very re re reliable and, uh, and can be re can replace the, the original. Uh, there is a, a, another one from the same author of NAC to C is uh, X NAC to C. And this, uh, in some way, can um, you, you use it interactively, but output is only visual and you miss the legacy NAC output. Um, the latest version can export some data uh, in uh, data files uh, uh, can, that uh, can be processed, uh, processed by new plot. Interesting is also NAC++ and uh, it is uh, a porting in uh, C++. And also PyNAC, that is a wrapper uh, for Python, uh, an high level wrapper around the C++ uh, interface. And um, another uh, tool that could be uh, useful to visualize uh, results as well as uh, input files is, is NAC. Uh, uh, to, to see. Um, again, I cannot. Uh, oh. What? Uh, um, Sorry, um, uh, well, um, thank you. Uh, FDTD is um, more recent, uh, and this method uh, offer two great uh, advantages compared to MOM. It does not require the inversion of large data matrices, uh, and so um, is uh, let's say relatively limited in the memory request. And uh, since it works in time domain, you can um, feed your uh, device with uh, short passes and uh, you can achieve uh, the results of uh, a wide range of frequency with a single simulation. Uh, on the other hand, it also has uh, disadvantages. Uh, the most evident is that you need to approximate the model on a structured rectangular mesh, so uh, you can suffer uh, what it is called the staircase uh, staircase effect, but. Uh, it is uh, widely used in um, is in open sources as well as in uh, commercial products. Next, please. Well, um, among uh, FDTD codes, uh, I want to uh, show you something about open EMS that is actually the solver of a well-integrated suite of programs. Uh, you have a geometric and electromagnetic uh, modeler, the engine, and you can output the, your result in various formats. Uh, and also you can integrate it with uh, 
partially integrated with circle, uh, circuit uh, simulator. And you can also have non-uniform meshing and you can program it uh, with the octave that is the open source counterpart of uh, MATLAB and uh, um, it also in, uh, in Python. And there are other uh, libraries that uh, can produce uh, softwares, uh, outputs and inputs for open EMS and uh, it is very easy to use. Uh, next one. Well, GPR Max instead uh, uh, was born to simulate uh, ground penetrating radar. And while the development is still focused on uh, GPR, uh, it can nowadays uh, considered a general purpose simulator. The development is very accurate and uh, uh, developers uh, pay a lot of attention to the theoretical correct and correctness of uh, the algorithm. The algorithm they use, it is widely spread among uh, the research community, especially with uh, the community um, studying GPR or uh, imaging in general. It is cited in more uh, in about uh, 700 uh, uh, scientific papers is written in Python and Cyton or uh, uh, a part, uh, so it can exploit the, the computing power of, uh, of Python, as well as it can uh, use the GPU. This is not uh, very common in open source code. And uh, a new version should be released, uh, released uh, soon. It was expected for the beginning of the year, but uh, it is a little bit late, but it should be released uh, maybe this month of the next one. And this is uh, this version uh, you can find on the um, GitHub uh, of uh, GitHub of uh, GPR Max uh, has uh, subgrading capabilities on the mesh and uh, an and extended and uh, enhanced uh, rich feature uh, API in uh, Python. Next one. MIP. MIP was developed uh, at MIT for optical problems uh, and is probably the most advanced uh, FDTD uh, open source uh, program. The package contains also an eigen solver and the frequency domain solver for time harmonic sources and it is completely programmable to a very, very fine level. And in principle, you can uh, uh, assess a, any single step of your uh, simulation. And uh, as um, a very rich ap application programming interface, uh, C++ scheme or Python and the large library for field uh, analysis and some visualization tools for post-processing. On the other hand, it is very complex and is not so easy to learn. Next one. Well, there are other FDD programs uh, uh, that you can find uh, 
on the net uh, and uh, are um, can be useful to your needs. Uh, for, uh, Vulture, in particular, NGS Vit uh, are worth uh, exploring. Let's see, next one, please. Next one. Well, as for um, finite element methods, uh, you can find uh, many packages, but in the form of libraries, uh, while uh, ready to use uh, FAM software for electromagnetic simulations is still uh, missing. The exception being maybe one lab anyway, you have still to program uh, in some way your uh, and to choose the, the, the right uh, way to solve your problem for any class of problem you are uh, you are dealing with. Uh, next please. Well, uh, as for uh, one lab, this is just uh, to show you the interface. Uh, it's called GMesh and uh, is actually a preprocessor, um, a CAD designer, a mesh tool, and also a post processor. Next one. Good evening, sir. Oh? Uh, myself, Shiva Prakash. I am a assistant professor in civil engineering department. I was listening to the lecture. It was very nice. Uh, sometimes the voice was not uh, too good, but I am curious to know how we can apply this field to the power civil engineering, sir, sciences. Please enlighten, sir. Oh, I must say, I... Maybe you can uh, write me some... I I have uh, difficulties with to hear you. Uh, uh, can you repeat, please? As yes, sir. My intention, my intention, my intention is that we are having a concrete cube specimens for testing. Uh, I Sorry. cannot understand. We can use imaging technique. So can the electromagnetic help us? Is what I am wondering, sir. If you are using, uh, if I'm using imaging techniques, sir, uh, if this is the question. Yes, sir. Uh, well, uh, you can use for um, forward solders your these uh, these codes, but. Uh, and uh, for uh, one lab in particular, you can also implement uh, uh, one lab uh, and other finite element schools uh, since they are actually more libraries than the um, whole uh, um, specific codes. You can use them. Uh, to implement also inverse problems. Maybe you can mix uh, your uh, finite element library with uh, there are some interesting tools in Python, for example, uh, to solve uh, your problem, but also in, uh, in C you can find the libraries uh, for uh, for uh, for imaging for inverse uh, problems uh, and uh, but uh, they were designed uh, in general to solve forward the problems but you can uh, use it uh, as uh, part or integrated uh, them into another uh, an, in, in inverse uh, or imaging problem. Thank you so much, sir. I got answer, sir. Thanks for the play for my small question. Thank you. 
Oh, you are. Well, there are other fan codes, uh, and maybe you can uh, consider Elmer that offers some uh, offers some GUIs capabilities as well as uh, two electromagnetic solvers, or NG solver, I suggest, and X Life plus uh, plus. Maybe are uh, the more advanced as for a, is um, as for a electromagnetic uh, solvings, but anyway, uh, you have uh, still to code inside uh, such uh, fan codes because you must say. Uh, what is uh, the method you are choosing, the space, the, the element you will choose, you, you must choose the right elements, uh, and so on. Um, let's say that are more high level libraries than uh, uh, all in one code. Uh, next. Thank you, sir. Well, uh, for pre and post processing, you can consider Salome and FreeCAD okay. that okay. are uh, good uh, tools, very complex tools. Especially Salome is um, is widely used and uh, uh, accurately developed uh, by a large community, and mostly is for civil engineering, mechanical engineering, and so on. But you can use uh, it. Uh, oh, are you? Yeah. Um, you can integrate it if you want. If you want in your uh, open source code is for uh, codes for electromagnetic. The next one. Sir, yes, sir. Yes. I'm a bit Yes. Uh, uh, as plotting tools, I want to mention new, new plot uh, that I I think you know as well. Uh, maybe some of you know the Matplotlib that is the facto standard for plotting in Python. And you, if you want to render complex scenes, you can use ParView or Mayavi too. Maybe Harvey is um, the most known. Uh, it is highly, uh, highly scriptable and can then embed in the, into other applications. Uh, Mayavi 2, on the other hand, uh, can uh, use as a library. And there is also this it uh, that is uh, a um, let the let's say that maybe it is an older tool, but it's very complex, very sophisticated. But I suggest using Paraview. Next one. Well, um, I want to shoot some antenna examples that uh, we produced. Uh, to compare results uh, uh, among uh, various uh, codes and as well as uh, with uh, some commercial codes. And we considered Open EMS, GPR Max, and NAC to C. And we have four examples here a printed dipole and log periodic antenna and uh, a Bquad antenna and the Yagiuda antenna. And I can see that I can say that the, the overall match is uh, is good uh, between uh, among the various software. Next, please. This is also to show you what you get when you deal with the visualization tools. This is our printed dipole in the first uh, simulation. Next, please. And this is the reflection coefficient. And uh, here you have um, 
the GPR marks uh, the OpenMS and uh, a commercial code uh, simulation, and you can see that uh, with GPR marks, because you have uh, to deal with the fixed uh, dimension mesh, maybe the simulation was not so accurate, but note that uh, anyway, the difference are minimal. And uh, while uh, you have a most a perfect match, let's say, with OpenAM, EMS, and commercial code. The next one. Well, this this is a three-element log per, printed log periodic uh, that was uh, designed uh, for um, a special use. Um, uh, and was simulated with um, open EMS as well uh, with the commercial calls. And uh, next, please. And also in this case, we have some differences. The overall results and the, um, the band of the two antennas is the, the two simulate given by the two simulations is almost the, the same. Um, open EMS being a little bit more optimistic in the in the results, uh, um, but uh, you see that uh, you have the the voltage standing wave ratio here, and you see that uh, um, results uh, can compare uh, well. The next. Is a, this is also to show you some uh, um, this picture that was obtained with the Paraview uh, from Open EMS, and this code antenna was simulated. I, if I remember, with NAC to C with Open EMS and with one or two commercial codes. Next one. Uh, uh, Professor Jen, I would like to, sorry to interrupt, I would like to say uh, this meeting, this meeting is scheduled till 8.30, uh, in next uh, 13 minutes, we, uh, this meeting is about to end, so can you, can you bind up? Yes, okay. Um, yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah. Because meeting time is scheduled at 8.30 in IST. Next, uh, next one. And the next one, you see that also in this case, you have uh, good agreement. Next one. Another example with uh, a, a Yagi Wood antenna. And also in this case, you have a good agreement. Next. And you see that the band is the same for the three, two commercial, two and uh, one, uh, one open suit. Next. Some other examples, just to show you the capabilities for other cases, not antennas, and just to, sh uh, and to show you some uh, uh, post-processing also achieved by open source code. Next. This is a directional coupler. Um, and this the next is the results. It was simulated by opening yes, you see here the behavior of the currents during the simulations, and this was obtained with the pair view by was generated directly with open EMS and uh, put uh, in per view. Next one. This is a, a coaxial to waveguide transition. Waveguide is not shown. Um, the probe is uh, about uh, one half of the height uh, of the, the waveguide. Next. 
this is the behavior you see that uh, in frequency you see that the refraction coefficient is very very good next and this is the behavior in time and uh, you can uh, have a movie of uh, the behavior in time uh, you can see here three time uh, steps uh, this is at the beginning of the simulation the left is the left one is at the beginning of, uh, of the simulations while the center and the right one are um at the end let's say at the end of uh, of the pulse of the energy of the system and also these uh, images were achieved with per review next Uh, with one lab, one lab uh, um, I will show you a stepped waveguide. I computed the result at 12 gigahertz, and the resulting S metric is uh, 0.21, let's say S11, and 0.38 S22. And uh, I will show you um, when. Uh, the left, uh, let's say, uh, the port one, the left one, is uh, feeded, and when the, the right one is feeded. Next. And you see here that from left to right, uh, you uh, have uh, a good transmission of your field that uh, enlarges in the, the, the larger waveguide and on the other side next one next one yes thank you and uh, you see uh, sorry uh, the previous one let me uh, you see that instead in this case you have uh, some reflection back um, but you can transmit uh, your uh, your field. Uh, I can provide you with uh, many more simulation and references. Let me conclude and thank you. Next, next one, conclusion. Well, I, we have considered some uh, open source programs uh, for electromagnetic design. And we can see that while uh, commercial programs can offer at the moment uh, um, some advantages over uh, open source uh, ones, because they are still superior managing the whole flow on, of the design and uh, could be faster in some cases. On the other hand, open source uh, has very good packages for electromagnetic simulation design and offers a wide variety of very high quality tools for pre and post processing of data um, to analyze results, to produce high quality graphs, and for example, to generate documentation you can. Uh, uh, write a simple script uh, with create a, a simple template in Markdown, for example, and use it to, to generate your documentation. And uh, so, while the integration among the various open source uh, packages is still uh, at an infancy, I I am promoting open source software and please use, consider using open source software in your projects and your papers because uh, if you share your code, you for sure have uh, back uh, more. Oh, let me thank. Uh, everybody and uh, particularly the organizers that invited me to this uh, very interesting uh, meeting and i apologize for say, my english and uh, 
for my mm, scars um, tools uh, for connection. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, over to uh, Dr. Patil to take a few questions from the chat window. Yes, sir. Thank you, Professor Gam. Uh, any questions from the participants? Yeah. Madam, good evening, Madam. Shiva Prakash speaking. Thank you so much. Okay. Good evening, Madam. Oh, okay. Carry on. Yes, sir. <clears throat> That's what I learned about some uh, softwares for civil engineering also. Some solve me software service telling for uh, investigation of concrete cubes. I was amazed and the presentation is very nice, sir. Except from for some audio uh, clippings not audible, the presentation is very nice, sir. We expect such uh, webinars frequently. Thank you so much. Um, can you repeat, please, your question? Yeah, because... Uh, um, uh, he's okay. just uh, he's just thanking you for the he's just thanking you for yeah. nice talk, sir. And uh, I yeah I have one uh, small you. question, sir. Can uh, yes, sir. Can uh, can we implement uh, ground penetrating radar using any SDRs? Uh, for uh, radar. Yeah. Can, we, yeah, can we build a GPR using an SDR, sir? Can you? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, are you speaking about the GPR? And uh, you want uh, to uh, to simulate GPR and uh, GPR response, or what? Do you want to do because depending on yeah by using software defined radio can we develop a GPR model? Yes, is um, maybe at another level. I mean, uh, uh, what uh, I'm speaking about electromagnetic simulation. I. I mean uh, that uh, we are dealing with electromagnetic waves, uh, not uh, with, uh, uh, let's say, circuits or systems. And um, so, if you want to use, yes, you, you can implement uh, GPR with uh, with software defined radius for sure. You, you can, but unfortunately, this is not my job. I I can provide uh, not uh, not much uh, suggestion to you. Uh, you can instead uh, uh, simulate. Uh, yeah. Excuse me, sir. Thank you very much. Excuse me, sir. Yes, please. Yeah, I have one question, sir. Yes. Yeah, sir. Uh, in uh, using whatever the open uh, sources you mentioned, whether we can use those open sources to simulate our lumped model circuit. Uh, yes, to simulate the uh, lumped uh, circuits, yeah. uh, there are uh, some tools. Uh, to, um, uh, the most uh, known is QX, uh, uh, and uh, uh, and maybe you can use spies. Spice and depending on uh, what uh, do you mean to uh, simulate uh, um, lump model uh, to integrate a lump model in uh, distributed model? 
or to simulate a circuit by itself, uh, you can use SPICE, SPICE and G, or G EDA uh, uh, contains SPICE and G, and uh, SPICE is, uh, is, is well known. There are commercial versions of SPICE, but if you use SPICE and G, you have a, a completely open source tool to, to model uh, your circuits. And you it can, in some way, to insert your circuits. This is not so easy, but it is not uh, impossible to do in uh, uh, open sources for electromagnetic uh, simulations. Too. Okay, thank you, sir. Welcome. More questions? Okay. So now I request uh, Dr. Amber to propose a vote of thanks. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Patil, uh, for being a member MOC for this webinar. I Myself, along with uh, Dr. Param and XCOM committee members of Information Theory chapter, would like to thank Professor Jan Luzi. And it is indeed a very informative session. And we got information for uh, related to many open source software. What are the advantages and disadvantages? With all this, uh, I would like to thank all the participants who are here as a, uh, for attending this webinar. Thank you, everyone. Uh, over to Paul, Dr. Patel to close this. Thank you, webinar. Dr. Amber. Uh, thank you and all the participants. The certificate you can download from the link provided in the chat box. Thank you, Professor Jain. Thank you to all of you for having invited me. Thank you, sir, for providing the very informative session on electromagnetic engineering, sir. So indeed, it will be very useful for us. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time, Professor. Thank you, everyone. Well, thank you. So I'm ending this meeting. Oh, thank you.